Welcome to God's Favourite Shepherds, a collection of 39 short stories rounding out the lives of mainly lesser-known Bible characters, with many of the stories ending with a short quiz. Listen now to the author of God's Favourite Shepherds, Bill Ackland. Today's story is not really a story. I've entitled it An Alphabet of Friends, and it's most of the friends that the Apostle Paul mentions in his various letters in the Bible uh, to show that Paul, as the subtitle of this story says, was sociable. And Paul is speaking here now. I have spent many years as a servant of Christ, the one I hurt by persecuting his followers. I now preach of him with a zeal that surprises even me. My name is Paul. While I am a Roman citizen, I am a Jew through and through. Yet the greater part of my ministry has been to the non-Jews we call Gentiles. While I have travelled much to spread the good news of salvation, of which the prophets foretold long ago, I have not been a solitary person as some people may think. While having to be strong for the Lord against overwhelming odds, my determined nature and the Holy Spirit have helped me bear what the devil has heaped upon me, I have been blessed by having the company and support of many stalwarts for Christ, both men and women. Nor have I expected to be waited on and fed and housed wherever I went. One of the blessings of growing up as a young Jewish boy is that I learned a trade, which I could always call upon to support me through life as the need arose, even if I chose another profession. That is how it was. Now I would like to tell you a little about the many people I call my dear friends. Some are closer to me than others. That is only natural, for usually true friendship takes time to mature. Given that, the love of Christ between Christian believers greatly accelerates the process. Allow me to use an alphabet you will understand in telling you about my many friends. There are quite a few listed on the letter a. Firstly, there is Achaicus. The name means belonging to Achaia, a province of the Roman Empire. He and two friends visited me at Ephesus, supplying my needs at that time, which the Church of Corinth omitted to do. Amplius. This name means enlarged. He is another Christian friend living in Rome, when I can truly say is my beloved in the Lord. Andronicus. This man's name means victorious man. He and his wife, Junia, were Christians in Rome. Not an easy place to be witnesses for Christ. Apelles. I can say without fear of contradiction that this man is truly approved in Christ. He is another Christian living in Rome. Aquila. This man's name means eagle. He watches over the flock of God from a distance as well as more closely. He and his wife Priscilla, a wonderful missionary couple, travel to many places to promote the cause of Christ. They were able to help the great preacher Apollos to an understanding of our dear Lord and Saviour. I mentioned this couple three times in my letter to the church in Rome. So does Luke, who is the author of the book, that tells of the spread of the newborn Christian movement in its early decades. Aristarchus. This man hails from Thessalonica. His name means best ruling. He was a great help to me in Ephesus on my third missionary journey and in my imprisonment in Rome. I can say that he was truly the best. Aristobulus. His name means well advised. And not only he... I consider his whole family to be my friends. I understand that he could well be a grandson of Herod the Great and a friend of Emperor Claudius Caesar. Asyncritus. What a wonderful name this friend of mine has, for it means incomparable. Artemis. Another friend of mine and of Christ, this man achieved what others could not. C. Claudia. This fine Christian lady 
played her part honourably in spreading the gospel, as did other Christian women throughout our part of the Roman Empire. Clement. Here is another name with a beautiful meaning. Merciful. I urge the church at Philippi not to forget to assist Clement, who, with others, has his name written in the Book of Life. E. Epinetus, meaning praiseworthy. This man was the first Christian in the Roman province of Achaia and was living in Rome at the time I sent my letter to the church there. I called him my beloved Epinetus. Epaphroditus, another name meaning beloved. This friend brought gifts to me when I was imprisoned in Rome. We thought we would lose him while he was with us as he became very ill. Thankfully, under God's blessing, he recovered and took my letter to the Philippian church. Epaphras, meaning, again, beloved. Sharing my imprisonment in Rome, this friend of mine, a dear fellow servant, helped found the church at Colossae. He brought good news about that church to me here in Rome. Erastus, this friend's name means Chamberlain. In fact, he was a prominent official in Corinth, being the city treasurer at the time of accepting the gospel. Eubulus, this man's name means well advised, and how appropriate, for I found him to be a wise counsellor and energetic worker in the cause of Christ. F. Fortunatus. As you may have thought, this man's name means fortunate. He is well named, for he has found the Saviour, and I am fortunate to have him as a stalwart for Christ in the church where he serves. G. Gaius. I very much depend on men like Gaius and his family. He has provided a home away from home for me where I stayed when writing my letter to the church at Rome. He and some other stalwarts for Christ accompanied me through the province of Achaia. They then went on ahead to Troas, where I met him a little later. H. Hermas. This man was in the group whom I caught up with at Troas. Human companionship is important, and I could depend on Hermas for his friendship. Hermes. The same can be said for this man as for Hermas. God certainly blessed me with men I could depend upon. Herodian. A relative of mine, one whom Herod freed from slavery, and now he is a happy slave of Jesus Christ. J. Jason. This friend of mine suffered much for the gospel. In his hometown of Thessalonica, he was dragged before the city officials for having shared hospitality with us in his home. Suffering seems to be a companion of those who fervently follow Christ. Julia. This dear lady, a close relative of Philogicus, was one who had become a Christian in Rome and I made sure to send my greetings to her in my letter to that church. L. Linus, one of four Christians in Rome who sent their greetings to Timothy when I wrote to him a second time. Keeping in touch with and encouraging each other is an important part of what it means to be a Christian. Lucius, this man was a close associate of mine when I wrote to the church at Rome and he made sure I sent his greetings to the church there. Luke, what can I say about this man, my personal physician, friend, travelling companion, and one who supported me in many ways? Anyone would be glad to count Luke as a close friend. Not only did he write one of the Gospels, he also recorded much of the progress of the Christian Church in its early years. A crown of life surely awaits this man. M. Mary. Mary was a bright shining light in the church at Rome. She was given a very popular name among Jewish women. I have to admit, it is not easy remembering all the Marys I know. N. Narcissus, 
I came to know this man from a previous contact, so when I wrote to the church at Rome, I made sure I sent my greetings to him and all his family who helped to keep the church alive and vibrant. Nereus. Among the many greetings I sent to Rome, I made sure I did not overlook this man and his sister who deserved encouragement from one of the Lord's apostles. O. Olympus. This man has a strong Greek heritage. Like many fellow Christians, he had to contend with much opposition when he accepted Christ as his saviour. A brief mention of his name in my letter to the Roman Church was something I did not want to omit. Onesimus. His was an unusual case. In fact, the only one of its kind in my experience in travelling far and wide preaching the gospel of Christ. Having escaped from his master Philemon, he had made his way to Rome, not realising that his contact with me would change his life, and perhaps Philemon's too. He accepted Christ under my ministry, and we became good friends, brothers in Christ, in the short time we knew each other. I was obliged to send him back to his master, but not before writing to Philemon, admonishing him to accept Onesimus, not as a returning runaway slave, but as a brother in Christ. I reminded Philemon that he owed me much in bringing him the gospel, so this small gesture in accepting Onesimus was surely an easy thing for him to do. I'm glad to say that what started as an unhappy event ended in reconciliation between a master and his servant. P. Petrobus. This man's name means life of the father. Of course, this could be taken in two ways. Either his life came from his father, which it did, or he was a great enjoyment to his father. I hope the latter applied as well as the former as this young man grew up. Another man in Rome to whom I wanted to send my warm greetings. Persis. This woman's name is derived from Persian. Her life as a slave has not been easy. However, in time, she was also a diligent worker for the Lord. In my letter to the Roman Church, I described her as beloved, for that is what she surely is. Philologus. With a name meaning fond of learning, this man certainly learnt much since he heard the gospel. He did not stop there, though, for he spread the gospel wherever he went. He is my kind of friend. Fliegen. This man's name means burning. To be frank, I'm not sure why a parent will give a son this name, but now that he is a Christian, he is burning in his seal for God. So I made sure to send my greetings to him at Rome. Phoebe. This lady's name means radiant or pure. She was a deaconess of the church at St. Crea, an eastern port of Corinth. When she made the journey to Rome on one occasion, she took a recommendation to the church there from me. She was significant in that she was described as a helper, or prostatus, in Greek, which in the language means patroness. A person in such a position was regarded as someone who protected people who did not have civic rights. Roman law recognised such people as having status in the community. I do not know anything of her personal circumstances, but it appears to me she was a woman of some wealth. Pudens. When I wrote to Timothy on the second occasion, Pudens made sure I sent his greetings to my young friend. Anyone who was a friend of Timothy was certainly a friend of mine. He was another of the saints at Rome who laboured under difficult circumstances. Q. Quartus a Roman name meaning fourth. He was another man vitally interested in the progress of the church at Rome. He made sure I sent his greetings to the church there to let them know that others in the Church of Christ were thinking of and praying for them. R. Rufus. You may have guessed that his name means red. He and his mother were stalwarts in the church in Rome and I did not want to forget them especially as I regard Rufus as chosen especially by the Lord. 
S. Secundus. This Roman name means second, which was clear to all who lived in our time. This man from Thessalonica accompanied me on a journey I took through Macedonia to the province of Achaia. Sopater, meaning of good parentage. He was the son of Pyrrhus from the city of Berea, and along with other Bereans was a diligent student of the scriptures. Sosipater, saving of the father. This could mean that he was the saving of his father, who at least had a son. I regard him as though a relative of mine, and he was also keen to send his greetings to our brothers and sisters in Christ in Rome. Stachus, I regard this man as my dear friend, another Christian in Rome, whose name strangely means an ear of grain. Stephanus, this name means crown bearer. How appropriate, for I believe he will wear the crown of life one day. I had the privilege of personally baptising this man and his family. All others I brought to Christ were baptised by my helpers. T. Tertius, this name means third. He was a most trusted friend and companion. It was he who wrote out my letter to the church at Rome. I would not trust this important work to one in whom I did not have complete confidence. Timothy, one who reverences God. I really do not know where to start in telling you about this dear young friend and fellow preacher of the gospel, How this young man grew into the man he is, I am sure is largely due to the godly mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois. While his mother was a Jew, his father was not. I first met Timothy at Lystra, when he was already a committed Christian. I immediately saw in this young man potential to be a strong worker for Christ, and I encouraged him in this direction. In fact, I invited him to be my assistant and travelling companion. We went on many journeys together. He accompanied me to the regions of Phrygia, Galatia, Troas, Philippi, Thessalonica and Berea, and later to Corinth. Then he went with me to Ephesus. Sometime later, Timothy visited Macedonia with Erastus. When I was in prison in Rome, I sent for Timothy to come to see me as soon as possible. Timothy is my dearly loved son in the Lord. Trophimus. This man's name means nourishing. How appropriate for his Christian witness is surely a means of nourishing the church. He, along with others, accompanied me to the Roman province of Asia after I had decided to travel through Macedonia following three months spent in Greece. Tryphena and Trophosa, sisters by birth and sisters in the faith, both their names meaning luxuriant. They constantly work to further the cause of Christ, and I count it an honour to call them my friends. Tychicus. With a name meaning happy, this man's happiness was complete when he found the Saviour. He developed into a strong and faithful minister for our Lord, and was so trustworthy that he carried my letters to the churches at Colossae and Ephesus. You, Urbanus, We need more of this type of person in the faith. His name means polite. He was truly my fellow worker for Christ in the growing church at Rome. Z. Zenus. When I wrote to Titus, I asked him to send Apollos, the successful evangelist, on his planned itinerary and also a fine Christian lawyer named Zenus. What an asset he was to the fledgling church of Christ. These and other friends helped to sustain and encourage me in the spreading the gospel. In their own way, they were just as successful as more prominent evangelists such as Peter, myself, and the other apostles. I value their loyalty and support. I am sure the Holy Spirit will speed on the work of the gospel through men and women such as those I have mentioned. Maranatha. You've been listening to God's Favoured Shepherds, a book with 39 short stories rounding out the lives of mainly lesser-known Bible characters. 
If you have any comments or questions or to obtain a copy of this book, give us a call within Australia on 02-4973-3456 or send an email to radio at 3abnaustralia.org.au. We'd love to hear from you.